As field scientists, we need various types of equipment to go out and do our monitoring and research. Oftentimes, if you're a program like ours that works around the country, around the world, we need to transport that material by plane. It used to be relatively straightforward, but in recent years, it's gotten much more difficult to move equipment around. Now, the, you can do things like have a dedicated uh, Pelican cases and the equivalent really rugged, awesome cases. These are great. This is the gold standard if you have the money and the logistics support. So these cases, oftentimes these big cases, which are perfect for protecting our high electronics, in this case, one of our drones, it's not in there right now, but, but you know, compartments for all this, net, it's all locked and loaded, it's perfect. Boom, everything fits nicely. Uh, but this is also quite heavy. If we talk about, for, some, for example, some of our larger drones, we have these, these cases that in and of themselves, the case weight is beginning to get close to the maximum baggage check um, without getting to significant overage charges, let alone the dimensions of the crate. That's to take one of our big hexcopters. But more typically, we're moving, um, and, and more typical for most field scientists, we're moving things like uh, transect tapes, uh, 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 GPSs, things of this nature. And so that gets into crates that aren't necessarily custom built for every single object. What do you do? We've not found a good solution. We um, Rubbermaid made some pretty solid ones that work pretty well. You can't easily get those these days. And um, the sort of the low end market for low uh, quality, uh, well, well, good quality, but, but relatively cheap um, uh, crates is gotten jumbled around. And so everybody makes a cheap crate now. These HDX ones are the ones we typically you get these at Home Depot. They're, they're pretty, um, you know, pretty cheap, but the problem is they just don't hold up. So, so they're great and that we can put a lot of material in them. Um, in this case, all kinds of random stuff, field vests, uh, uh, tape, etc. Um, they come in a couple different sizes, so that's nice. This is great for things that are relatively light. But when we get to stuff that's expensive, now this, this is not how things are packed. We had to um, t take these um, lithium batteries in our uh, personal items on the plane, um, as opposed to being checked because of some new FAA regulations. But um, So these were not loosely packed in here, but, but you don't want to ever pack stuff just completely loosely like this. Stuff jam jumbles around, but the point being, that these types of cases are key. Here we have some GPSs uh, secured in, um, in more robust uh, Pelican cases, but nevertheless, we have to transport the whole lot of them. In this case, this was a crate that had some heavy stuff in it, um, and they did what they typically do. They throw these things around. They are not careful of our equipment ever. The airlines just don't care. Toss them around. In this case, this guy was busted. So um, the, these, these cheap crates, like these HDX crates, are pretty much a one and done type of piece of equipment. So the bottom breaks like you see. Alternatively, the tops tend to break like, like this. And so they just, it really, they need to be considered a, a one use uh, transportation uh, vehicle, which is unfortunate. We'd really like to have something that we don't have to keep buying new ones every single trip and can be robust. You know, it would be ridiculous to assume that we'd get this quality of case uh, relatively cheap. But nevertheless, some very simple design approaches could make these crates much more robust. First and foremost, thicker walls. So these guys are pretty darn thin, which is great for making them light. Horrible for making them resilient to the activities that TSA and people treat them with. Um, one cheap workaround is you could take two of these two of these uh, bottoms, for example, and stack them together to layer them. You'd have to glue them together so they'd stay together or somehow tape them together and then put a lid on. But that doesn't solve the problem of the broken lids. Broken lids um, are just sort of the nature of this, this design feature, which is you have to flex it to get it open and they, they are stackable. So people try to stack them and they'll have a little bit of things be off uh, a little bit of alignment be off and it'll tend to, to pop these guys. So we see both breakage on the central part of this as well as on the edges of these cheap crates. So shipping, a non-trivial thing when you're thinking about planning your next research expedition, um, you really need to pay some close attention to how you're going to keep your equipment safe and protected. So one, it gets to your destination and you're able to collect your science, your data, 
two, you get the equipment back home uh, in one piece. But if you guys have any suggestions, love to hear it. Um, give us some suggestions at the bottom of this video. But uh, uh, moving equipment around, a key part of being a, a professional field scientist.